be there two weeks. So we knew God wow. was working in his life. So it really made a big impression on us. Now, when, when you ask Christ into your life, I mean, you're talking about a peace that just really people can't understand. You didn't believe in God. You didn't even know if God was out there. And so you asked him to come into your life, and he, he really did change your life. Oh. It wasn't something you made up. No. no. Mm -mm. Before this had to happen, if somebody had to come to you and said to you, hey, man, listen, you really need to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, what do you think you'd have said to him? Well, that happened to me before, but I didn't want nothing to do with it, you know. I thought these people are weird, you know. Yeah. I thought we're just, you know, religious freaks, Jesus freaks, whatever you want to call them, uh -huh. you know, and I didn't uh, want nothing to do with them. That's right. Now, so he went through chemotherapy and none of this seemed to be doing any good? Well, he went through radiation five full weeks, the fullest dose the child's allowed, but the tumor was in the middle of his head on his brain stem. So they warned us, you know, the radiation probably wasn't going to do any good, but at the time you're grabbing at straws, you know, you want to leave no stone unturned, and you feel, well, I'm going to do it anyways. And it turned out to be a total failure. It, it did nothing. The now, test what was your that. feeling when that when the doctors came back and said, "We've done it, and nothing. We've given him the maximum amount, and there's nothing we can do." Well, um, at the time, we weren't attending a church that believed in healing, so we thought it was real doomsday. Well, I did, he didn't, and we found a church that did believe in healing right after that, and it just changed our lives. I mean, the hope and the faith that was built up through attending that church and reading God's Word. It just, um, I mean, really, it, it just totally changed our lives. So now you went from being fearful and not knowing to a situation that, that says there's peace, and I really believe that there's hope now. From a hopeless oh, situation to a situation full of hope. Definitely. So the time was coming up for his new appointment, mm -hmm. and you did something you'd never done before. Right. Well, we had joined a church that was, uh, you know, they believed, like the Bible tells you, that God does want to heal you. And we had the whole church pray, and we found out some people prayed the whole day. And we went to Cleveland Clinic the next day, and we were there almost eight hours, and then they start making phone calls from the different tests to the doctor, that, you know, and they said, you've got to get in a cab and go to the other side, talk to the doctor. And he comes in and told us that uh, he couldn't believe it. Maybe the test was wrong, but they could not find this tumor anywhere. Absolutely not even a trace. No, that's right. Of the tumor. Even the, the damage that was done to the brain vent ventricles was and the healed. Brain stem. The doctor, mm -hmm. they were damaged, and they were after the Lord worked on them, they were healed completely. And the brain stem is perfect now, where it was very swelled up, and it even had fragments hanging off of it. It's perfect now. Wow. That is a bona fide miracle of God. Definitely, no other way. No question about that. Let me ask you this, because there are people out there who have young, you know, guys like Alex, and they're saying, well, what, how do I believe? And what do I hold on to? The doctors have told me there's no hope. They told me to give up. What do I hold on to in a situation like this? Uh, Jesus Christ, you just got to read his word and, um, you know, take him as your personal savior and just um, pray. You know, the power of prayer is just unbelievable. It, it can move mountains.